Gusto ko lang magkomento dun sa lumabas na survey ng Pulse Asia na sinasabi na 82% ng lahat ng mga Pilipino ay naniniwala na credible yung eleksyon. Sige, kung ganun, ano, ibig sabihin nun, ano, ay 4 out of every 5 Filipinos believe that the election was credible. 4 out of every 5. So kung may nakausap akong limang tao, apat nun, ang sasabihin sa akin na naniniwala sila na credible tong election. At kung ganun, edi count me as 1 out of every 5 na hindi naniniwala na credible yung election. At wala akong problema kahit na nasa minority ako according to Pulse Asia. At ito ang aking opinion, ha? hindi naman to fact. Like I always say, everything I say right now is just my opinion of what I'm seeing. Now, here's the thing that bothers me ano, or that I think is uh, questionable. Ano? Kasi ang sinasabi ba sa akin na wala sa na mas maraming Pilipino na 4 out of 5 Filipinos believe na credible ang election kahit na ang daming nakitang mga anomalya at ang daming nakitang mga kaduda-duda. Umpisahan ko na nung 2019 pa lang. Yun pa lang ano, yung flatline ng top 9 senators. Okay, during that election, tapos namatay na yung uh, Smartmatic uh, counting machines from what, ano ba yun, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. until 1 a.m. Tapos nag-on and magical 95% was counted. So, yung palang was a little bit problematic na for me. Next, after nun, ano, uh, don't forget na Namfrel uh, did not participate na during that time in 2019. That was the first time Namfrel decided not to participate in an election. At nangyari yun. And even Duterte himself was saying na nga that he believes that Smartmatic has a lot of anomalous problems that uh, occur within their system na nakakaduda na na huwag na gamitin sana ang Smartmatic. Oh, yan, si Duterte na para sa mga Duterte fans. Siya na nagsabi mismo na may problema yung Smartmatic. Next, yun, in my opinion, was a prelude. The 2019 was a prelude to see kung may aangal ba at kung may magkakwestiyon ng credibility ng Smartmatic at ng election results. At nung walang nagquestiyon nun at tahimik ang lahat, doon nakita siguro na Smartmatic at ng mga powers that be na kaya tong palusutin. That's my opinion. Again, I'm speculating. For all I know, it really did happen. You make up your own conclusion. Again, if you're part of the 4 out of 5, that's your prerogative and that's your opinion. Mine, you can call me a conspiracy theorist if you like, pero nakakaduda lang talaga. And I like to be a skeptic. Ganun talaga ako sa lahat ng bagay. Ngayon, after nung 2019 nangyari, ano, at wala masyadong umangal, 2022, ready na sila. At this time, ang nakakatakot lang, again, ang daming anomalya. Unang-una, Maraming mga allegations of vote buying. May mga nakitang video with stacks of millions of pesos na pinamimigay. Tapos may nakita pang video na may mga polis na nagpapapirma ay nagpapafill up ng mga ballots. Blank ballots. Tapos, hindi lang yon Si Larry Gadon na senatorial candidate nagbakaw dahil hindi doon siya makabayad ng 200 million para sa Smartmatic para panalunin siya. Siya nagsabi nun na hindi ako. At why is this all swept under the rug? Why is it not being investigated? Why is it not being talked about? Next, on top of that, yung source code ng Smartmatic was supposed to be independently audited. Now, from what I remember, parang may nagsabi na parang hindi daw nag, na, na meet yung independent audit by a certain time by Smartmatic. And not only that, the source code itself should be open source. Hindi pwedeng yung bubuksan lang kung kailangan makita. Dapat open source yan eh. Para can always be looked at and, and can always be determined kung may problema or, or wala. Pero at any time, siguro ngayon, pag sinabi mong pwede pa pakita ng code, they could give you any code and say that yeah, that was used during the election. Or they could switch the code up. I mean, ang daming ways para dayain to eh. Yun lang yung nakakatakot dito sa nangyayari ngayon eh. Is that, Oo na lang tayo ng oo, nga nga na lang tayo ng nga nga, kahit na ano ibigay sa informasyon, papayag na lang tayo na ito na yung katotohanan without questioning it, without being a skeptic. And to begin with, ano, I have never believed in surveys because I've always believed surveys are a tool to be able to mind condition, to manipulate people's minds, to believe that a certain direction or a certain candidate is winning. And remember, these surveys are commissioned. Ang tanong, sino nagko-commission sa kanila? So many anomalies. In the Philippine election. And not only that, I've always believed that if you look at the elections in itself, eh, the fact that you're saying that one out of every, more than one out of every two Filipinos voted for Bongbong Marcos, I find is very unbelievable. And then pag-usapan natin yung sinasabi nila na law of large numbers daw, kaya daw consistent na 
Law of large numbers dictates na pag ginawa ang isang bagay na paulit-ulit, naaabot yan sa kanyang uh, theoretical average. So for example, flipping a coin, di ba? 50-50 yan eh, pag flipping a coin, eh, di ba? Pero pag say 10 times yung ginawa, pwedeng magiging 8 times, magiging heads, 2 times magiging tails. Pero the more often you do it or the larger the number of times you do it, magiging 50-50 yan. So hindi ibig sabihin na 20 times, 50-50 immediately. Eh, ito naman ang sa election natin, 47% difference between Lenny and, and Marcos at the very start. Hanggang sa dulo, hindi na nagbago. That's not what the law of large numbers says. The law of large numbers says na kahit nauna si Marcos, pero pag dumating yung mga bot sa iba't ibang lugar, mag average out yan, darating yan sa kanyang statistical average. At ano yung statistical average? If it was really 47% difference between the two, then it will reach that conclusion. It doesn't mean na yung 47 is going to be flatlined all across from one from the start to the end. Yun yung difference. Ibig sabihin nun, aakit, bababa, aakit, bababa, at eventually, abot yan sa 47% kung totoo yung 47%. I'd say it's not the law of large numbers. I'd say it's the law of programming. Because that's where I'm really questioning things. Kaya nga sabi ko talaga, dapat talaga open source to eh. And then pag sinabi ng mga tao sa akin, well, majority Chris kasi voted talaga for bong bong, shut up ka na lang. Wow. Well, you know what? I've always been glad to be a part of the minority if that's the case. Although I don't believe it's a majority ah. Pero kung yan ang reasoning, ano? Alam mo, I'm always happy to be part of the, part of the minority. Masaya ako doon. Masaya ako na isa ako sa mga skeptiko. Masaya ako dahil alam mo ba, sometimes ano, pag pinag-usapan natin yung majority, iniisip ko yung word na common sense. Isipin mo na lang common sense. Ano? Parang ano siya, oxymoron. Kasi it doesn't make sense. Common sense seldom makes sense to me if we are using it in light of the fact na karamihan ng mga tao ay naniniwala sa isang bagay. Okay, let's look at it. Common sense is what creates a mob mentality if that's the case. Common sense is, is the reason why Jesus Christ was crucified or Galileo was called a heretic for saying that the earth is not the center of the universe. So common sense or mob mentality is the problem with this world. Is that we believe na pag maraming naniniwala sa isang bagay, na yun na yung katotohanan, we need to have better sense than just common sense. We need to be more critical. We need to be thinking for ourselves and not allowing surveys to dictate how we think. We need to be better at this. We need to ask more questions. And I have a lot of questions. Pero sino ba ako? According to pulsation naman, I'm part of the minority. I'm part of the one out of five that don't believe this election is credible. Maybe we're asking the wrong questions. Baka imbis na tanungin lang natin kung credible ba ang election, baka ang kailangan natin is survey at itanong, ay credible pa ba ang pulsation?